What's up, y'all? I, I gotta use a new phrase, actually, when I start. Um, you guys know who I am by now, um, I guess. I pretty much make these videos for people on my <laughs> Facebook feed, I guess. Um, today, I wanted to talk about a really, I guess, uh, serious issue, and that is, not an issue, but uh, something that's often uh, criticized in Islam. And if I hear one thing more, then Muslims are terrorists on my news, on my Facebook feed. It's that Islam oppresses women. Um, and to me, this could be no further from the truth than it actually is, um, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, I'd like to talk about this today because I know I have a lot of uh, feminists on my Facebook feed and people that are self proclaimed feminists, and I really respect that. And I think it's very important that feminists understand feminism from an Islamic perspective because um, I see. Islam, in my, in my personal belief, as the only way to uphold, not only protect, but uphold women's rights. Like, hands down, I see it as the best possible way. And, and here's why, I'm going to explain why. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to kind of make two statements. Uh, one of them is kind of like a, a fact, I think, that we generally know today. And the other one, well, I kind of said it already, I, already, I think <laughs> Islam is the best way to protect women's rights. Um, because it makes, uh, it not only lays out those rights like for example in the canadian charter of rights and freedoms we have that nobody shall be discriminated against you know based on their sex or race or age or stuff like that you know that that sounds nice but it, it like in terms of practicality and how it's going to be upheld there's very little practicality in terms of that whereas i think the quran has very specific laws that kind of ensure women's rights and we can talk about those in a sec um but the other statement is for people who do think that you know islam oppresses women um Right? And this is just a matter of education, I think. So the point of these videos is just to educate people, right? Um, number one, an undisputable fact today is that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the entire world. And more, interesting, more interestingly to me that I recently found out is that the vast majority of reverts into Islam, we say reverts because uh, we think everybody is born a Muslim. Um, but we say reverts into Islam. Uh, the vast majority of reverts, at least I think I've heard different estimates, but the majority of reverts are women. Right. So if Islam is a religion that you know oppresses women, why would the majority of people coming into Islam be women? That's something we have to think about going forward. Uh, but okay, let's start. First, I'd like to talk about the rights that women have in Islam. Okay, so let's talk about that. All right, number one, um, let's just talk about basic rights that you know we all take for granted every single day. Um, and this is I could I could make this a lot more animated, I suppose, by talking about you know, rights at the time and, and rights that, you know, women did not even have until like 50, 60 years ago, which I'm sure all of us know, like, for example, the rights to vote or for, uh, like things like that, basic, you know, basic rights like that. Islam established these 1400 years ago. Uh, Prophet Muhammad came at a time when people were killing, were, bear were burying their own infant daughters alive. Okay. And he came and he said, no, this has to stop. Because basically the thing was, if you, if you, it's kind of like in some places in the world today where if you, if you give birth to a daughter, then people think, oh, she's a burden. She can't provide for me, right? And that was the thought in the time in, you know, fourth century or, or four, in uh, 1400 years. I can't even speak English. I, I said. But that was the time, the thought at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And so he came and he basically said, no, this is wrong. And it says in the Quran that do not kill your children, period, whether it be male or female. For Allah is the provider of, for both you and them. So that is something that was outlawed with the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, number one, um, women can work in Islam. This is something that's often, I guess, uh, misconstrued or misconstructed. Women actually can work in Islam. Uh, there's nothing in the Quran that says women cannot work. Uh, women can own property. A woman can be richer than a man. No doubt about that. Um, yeah, so women can own property. And actually, if you look historically, the first wife of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was his boss. So, for people who think that, you know, women can't work or women can't own wealth, like, like look, we take the example after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his first wife, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, was his boss, and she was 25 years older than him. Um, and, you know, I keep stressing that if you want to learn about love, if you want to learn about commitment, if you want to learn about struggle, Look at that relationship though, between Khadija radiallahu anha and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him because that lasted 24 years before he had anything, before he was known and she was the first person to believe in him. 
So she was, she's one of the people that we all look up to as Muslims, the mother of the believers, we say. Her and Aisha, which is another wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We could talk about this too, that people take issue with polygamy and I say, um, that is kind of a very narrow-minded view. And we could talk about that, but I think I, I can leave that for another video. But anyways, uh, so yeah, women can own property, women can have money, women can work. Um, money, what else? Women actually get inheritance in Islam. It's guaranteed inheritance, um, unlike some other places or some other religions, perhaps. Um, so these are five things, I guess, what else? Voting, po politics and stuff like that. In Islam, there's a verse, in the Quran, there's a verse that says, the believing men and the believing women support each other. And they forbid, they enjoin what is right and they forbid what is wrong. So it's the duty of both the men and the women, I think, to, to do that in Islam. And there's no law that says a woman can't work in politics or a woman can't vote or a woman can't do anything like that. Um, and actually, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he consulted his wives. He consulted his wives. Um, and I mean, he was the messenger of God. So, I mean, technically, he didn't have to consult anybody because he was divinely inspired in everything that he did. But... He still did. He still did to show us how to treat our wives, to show us how to treat women. Um, so that is something. The other thing that just came to my mind. So Allahumma la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Um, what was it? Learning, education. Okay, education is not only something that is allowed on the part of women, but it's something that's encouraged. Muslims, there's a saying of the Prophet Muhammad that it's an obligation upon every believer, male or female, to learn to learn, to, like to get knowledge of the religion, to get knowledge of all sorts of things. And actually, one of his, uh, Aisha, that we call her also the mother of the believers. She was the youngest of the wives. And she basically became so, she became the first scholar of Islam, essentially. She became the first scholar of Islam, regardless of, of gender. And she not only learned things about the Quran and Islam, but she learned things about mathematics and history and things like that. So education is not only incur and not not only allowed you know to be pursued by women but it's encouraged to be pursued by men by women uh so yeah these are basically a couple of rights that are guaranteed uh for women in islam uh and there's i'm sure there's plenty more but i'm just kind of going this again when i make these videos i just kind of say i'm going to rely on allah and just see what comes out of my mouth <laughs> so yes so so let's go from there um yes if i make a mistake i stuck for the law but as of now i'm pretty sure everything i've said is correct <laughs> Now let's go on to let's go on to the thing let's go on to restrictions right because I mean it is Islam is a religion and like we believe like restrictions can be a good thing oh there goes my light hopefully you can still see me okay okay uh, I'll, I'll hopefully work on that in editing but so restrictions yes the one thing that you know people point out people hint out or people look at to say that women are oppressed in Islam is the hijab right this is the one thing that we can all see the one thing that um yeah so people often criticize okay so this is something i want to talk about and let's actually go to the verse i have the i have my english copy of the quran here and let's actually go to the verse that says where women are supposed to cover their heads so let's let's, let's see here oh, my feet are killing me okay okay i'm just gonna fix this right here all right all right so I hope you don't mind if I sit down. Uh, <laughs> okay, so chapter number 24, it's called Surat An-Nur, which means light. Uh, verse number 31, okay? And say to the believing women, keyword say, keyword say to the believing women, not force the believing women. Say, the, say to the believing women to lower their gaze, that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty. Obviously this is a translation, right? But the, the Arabic is right here, so we can always cross-reference it. But, I think it's still pretty uh, accurate. And that they should not display their beauty and ornaments except what ordinarily appears thereof. Um, that they should draw their veils over their bosoms and not display their beauty except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons, their brothers, blah, 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 blah. And the list goes on and on. But basically, the, the verse that ordains or orders women to cover is this. Uh, that they should not display their beauty and ornaments except that which ordinarily appears thereof, and that they should draw their veils over their bosoms and not display their beauty except to their husbands, and then the list goes on and on. So this is the verse that ordains that. Um, so some people might say, the criticism I often get is, uh, some people might say, well, why do women have to wear it and why do men not have to wear a hijab? 
Okay. Number one, in Islam, we do believe that although men and women are equal, they're not identical, right? So we do see things that you do. We do see men and women as very different. Okay. But in terms of attainment, in terms of uh, value, in terms of equality, they're 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 equal. They're not identical as in like terms of biologically, physiologically, and things like that. But they are identical. Okay. And for us, the highest attainment of a Muslim basically is piety, right? Is closeness to Allah. And in Islam, right, a woman can be more pious than a man. A woman can be more pious than a man or, or yeah. So in terms of that, they're both equal. And Allah addresses in a number of verses in the Quran, the believing men and the believing women. So um, in terms of attainment, I guess what I'm trying to say is in terms of attainment, Right, we see that men and women are equal, but in terms of their physiology, in terms of biology, in terms of you know the way we are, we do think that men and women are different, right? And so that's why women have to women have a different set of I guess I, I guess yeah a different set of rules when it comes to this. But now, if you disagree with me about this, right? If we say well no, this is something that society teaches us, right? Society teaches us that you know men and women are different. Okay, number one, you have to prove that I think. Because I, I, I don't believe that. And I don't think there's evidence to, to support that. And number two, if that's the case, then why do we, for example, right? Why do we, for example, in the Olympics, right? Why do we separate men and women events? Men's and women events. Now you might say, okay, well, obviously men are stronger than women. Men are faster than women. So I would say that's, that's one way in which we are actually different. We're not 100% equal. But the other thing is like, for example, let's say bathrooms. Like, why do we separate men's and women's bathrooms if we're all kind of like the same or if we're equal? Like, if we're actually identical, right? Right. I do think men and women are equal, but not identical. That's that's the point here. So, Islam identifies that, and it basically says that yes, because you are different, right? And in a way, like we view women in Islam as jewels, as something to be protected, right? So what happens when, if, if you had a jewel, you wouldn't just leave it out on the street. You wouldn't just like take it with you. You wouldn't would just abuse it wh wherever you go. You would cover it. You would protect it. And that's what we do in Islam with our women. But now some people say, well, why is, why is the same restriction not on men? And if you actually look, the verse right before the one that I read to you. So that was verse number 31. The verse number 30 says, addresses the men first. Okay. And it says, say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and guard their private parts. That will make for greater purity for them and Allah is well acquainted with what they do. Okay? So, in society, right, we have this whole thing where, what do people often say, right? When obviously this is something that feminists that, you know, gets, really gets under the skin of feminists when, and I rightfully so, because some people say, oh, she made me do it. She made me do it. How she was dressed, she made me do it. That is not an excuse in Islam. It's not allowed because the verse before that addresses you first. It's on you, bro. You have to cover, you have to lower your gaze. You have to lower your gaze. So it's on you. So you're essentially wearing a hijab too by covering yourself. And no matter where you go, right, it's on you first to lower your gaze. So interestingly, the verse dealing with the issue of hijab actually addresses the men first. And the other thing is in terms of forcing women, oppressing women, right? The verse very clearly says, I'll read the Arabic to you as well. Okay, okay. And then it says, And وَكُلْ means to say. And mu'minati means the believers. So say to the believing women. Mu'minati is the feminine version of believers. So say to the believing women um, that they should lower their gaze. It doesn't say make the believing women. It says say to them. So... Um, it is a choice. It is a choice, and it's not for men to force. It's not for. It's not for men. Uh, it's not something to be forced on women. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight that. In uh, my belief is that Islam is perfect, but Muslims are not perfect, right? So what we see in Saudi Arabia, for example, with women not being able to, to drive, that kind of I'm like, where does that come from? Like, is that part? Because that's not in the Quran. It doesn't say don't let a woman drive in the Quran. And from my understanding, it's nowhere in the hadith as well. And the hadith is essentially the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. So, sallallahu alayhi wa So, again, I think the religion is perfect, but people aren't perfect, right? And if you think, uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about, I guess, is the issue of a woman being covered. Um, okay, this is something that I think a lot of people have mixed 
values about, mixed views about, right? Because some people view it as something that liberates women and some people say, view it as something that oppresses women. Say a woman has a right to do whatever she wants with her body, right? And, and there's that, right? And, and in a sense, in a sense, I agree that it is a woman's, certainly a woman's choice because that's what the Quran says. It says, tell the believing woman. It doesn't say tell the believing man to make the believing woman, right? It says tell the believing woman. So it's a woman's choice. Um, but I want to talk about this thing because I feel like, I, I, I said the best way to protect women's rights is through Islam, right? And I feel like actually what we consider to be liberating to women in the West, like in Canada and Japan or whatever, is actually oppressing them, like significantly oppressing them. And here's why, right? Because what do we, what do we see? Like when we look at billboards, when you look at Facebook, when you're scrolling through Facebook, what do you see often? Advertising the advertisement that does what? Sexualizes women, right? Sexualizes women. Essentially, this whole society, the value of women that we view as today is based upon her sexuality. It's based upon her looks. And that's really all there is to it. That's, that's what society has come to view women as. And that's how a lot of men have come to view women as, right? And obviously, I don't have to kind of, we don't have to talk about the fact that this is completely wrong because there's so much more to you than your, your looks, right? And when we do these things, when we basically say um, that... When we sexualize women, essentially what we're saying, you have no value other than, than how you look. And that is what Islam essentially prohibits. So Islam basically tells women, you're better than this. You're completely separate from this, right? You don't have anything to do with the system that sexualizes you. Your value, your, your value like, is in your soul, is in your piety, is in your personality. It's not in your looks, right? So Islam essentially, I think, actually liberates women in this sense, right? It liberates women. And this whole thing about modesty, I should say, it's not just for women, it's also for men. Like for example, men have a, what's called an aura in Arabic, where you can't, it's called basically like your private parts. And, and it's basically from your navel, which I guess is your belly button, down to where your knees are. So like for example, when I go swimming and stuff, like I can't really show that part, right? Um, and Allah says in chapter seven, verse 26, I believe it is. Ya bani Adam. Oh, children of Adam, we have sent down upon you clothing. I'm forgetting the Arabic. But anyways, it essentially means that uh, clothing as an adornment for you and so that you may cover your private parts. And then the next verse says, And the clothing of the pious is better. So it's, it's not saying specifically men or women. It's just saying generally the clothing of Righteousness and piety is better than that. It's better than just covering your private parts, essentially, right? Um, so modesty, my point is modesty is something for men and women. And um, the reason why I guess women have to cover up is because we, again, we view women and, and men as completely different beings. Um, like different beings, but equal, right? They're different, but they're equal, if that makes sense. They're not identical, but they're equal. That's essentially what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, so from an Islamic perspective, that is women's rights. And that is kind of, I think, what some people need to understand. And again, always I would like to kind of like encourage people to, right? We have this thing, it's called like eth ethnocentrism, right? Where we always think that, you know, because we're modern, because we're, you know, 2017, because we're this and that, we, we seem to think that we're better. We seem to think that we have things right. Right? We, think, we seem to think that everything be that came before is wrong or it's backwards or isn't that. But that is wrong to me because if you look around society today, we have so many different problems. Right? So many different problems. You have problems, okay? I have problems, right? Our society is not perfect. And certainly in Islam, we don't believe this world is perfect, but we do think some systems are better than others, right? Um, so I would always just encourage you, whatever you're doing, whatever you are being presented with, whatever information you're being presented with, Think about it critically, right? And don't always assess things from how you think things are right because maybe we see things sometimes that are not correct or maybe our justifications for, for things are not correct or they're not supported by evidence. So I always just encourage critical thinking. Don't just accept what people tell you. Go and learn about things yourself. Um, whether it's your priest, your imam, or your rabbi, or your teacher, whatever they tell you. I mean, res out of respect, you know, Assume the best, but always, always ask for evidence. Always ask for clarification. If something doesn't make sense to you, if something's not supported by evidence, don't believe it, right? Use your critical thinking, use your logic, 
use your evidence, use science, use these things, right? And this is coming from a religious person. I'm telling you to use evidence and science and logic to kind of decipher things, right? So that's something we always need to do. And don't judge things from your culture or from to, to think that, that you know, you're best because if you use that kind of thinking, you know, you, you, what makes us different than people like Hitler, you know, and like Stalin and stuff like that, really though. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like a little spiel on women's rights in Islam. I always encourage open discussion. So if anybody has any questions or or anything that I, if you have any, if you if you want to comment on anything that I said, if if you have, want any clarification or anything like that, please message me or write in the comment section or, or anything like that. And uh, yeah, peace, blessings, love, and peace. Salam alaikum. I shouldn't do that. Anyways. <laughs> But yeah, peace, blessings, love, and guidance to everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.